Welcome to Church at Home. I'm Rachel, and I'm so excited you decided to join us today. Pastor Derek has another amazing and inspiring message for you, and we can't wait to share it with you. Well, hello, Church. Pastor Derek here, and I want to welcome you to Church at Home today. I'm really excited that we're going to be continuing a series of messages today called Alpha and Omega. This is going to be week four, and we're just about to close it out next week. Uh, moving into Vision Sunday for 2022, Pastor Jen and I are really, really excited about what's to come for our campuses this year in 2022, and we cannot wait to share this with you. But today, like I said, we're going to be in week number four of this amazing series that we've called Alpha and Omega, and what we're doing is we're inviting you to have Jesus sit in on your alpha and your omega moments throughout your life. These are the moments that are beginnings and endings. Sometimes they are chosen, sometimes they are chosen for us, but it's really critical and important that you invite Jesus to sit with you in these beginnings and endings in your life. And so we're gonna jump right into this. I'm really excited about today's message. I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite stories and characters of the Bible just simply because of the amount of reconciliation, restoration, and goodness of God in the story of Joseph. We'll get there in just a moment, but first I want to take a couple of minutes just to prepare us, to prepare our hearts for this story. And uh, you know, we talked the last couple of weeks about not despising small beginnings, about uh, us seeing that God is in these beginning moments like David out in the field as a shepherd boy and realizing that God was with him in the preparation. There's power in the preparation um, that you, uh, uh, once you're faithful over little, that God will make you ruler, o ruler over much. We talked about that last week with the uh, amazing story of the parable of the talents, but also uh, that there's power and preparation, like I said, with the story of David. Because we see David move from a shepherd boy in the field to a warrior king in just a few chapters of the Bible because God was with him and God was preparing him. God had put giftings in him for such a time when he needed those. And so today, the main idea that I want to get to you today is that you need to add God to your perspective. See, we have perspectives and ways that we constantly see things moving in and out of life. And I want to challenge you today to add God to your perspective. Whether it's a beginning or an ending, it's a simple thought. Add God into it. Add what God says about you and your situation to your beginnings and your endings. Right? Just saying things like give credit where credit's due. Uh, not where it isn't. A lot of times we see things in life uh, and we think that they happen for a particular reason because we've done something wrong, because uh, God is angry with us, he's, got, he's out for us, He's going to get us. And that is simply not true. That's not at all what Scripture says about you and your relationship with God. And I hope to remind you of that today because we look at people, circumstances, and even loved ones in this scenario adding God to your perspective. Remember this verse from the last couple of weeks that we mentioned. It's in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. This is the message translation. And it says, Does anyone dare despise this day of small beginnings? They'll change their tune when they see Zerubbabel sitting, the last setting, excuse me, the last stone in place. What a beautiful reminder that we should never look down upon, or the Bible says never see insignificant, the day of small beginnings, right? Because uh, again, God declares the end from the beginning. We read that several weeks ago in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. He declares the end from the beginning, and He's looking down the road. He's declaring that our ends will be good because He has our best interests at heart. And today, like I said, we're going to look at the amazing story of Joseph today and the fact that Joseph had really a rough start in life 
and then he went through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of ups and downs, but we see this beautiful aspect of forgiveness and redemption and reconciliation in the story because his perspective was had God added to it. His perspective always had God added to it. And I want to read a few verses to you today. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. It says, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. And so we see this start of Joseph's life in this rough start, this rough patch. Now the Bible says that he brought a bad report about his brothers. We're not really told if that was um, him speaking poorly of them or him simply bringing a, a report of what they had been doing. But what I want you to understand is that he always added God to his perspective. He was always seeing that God was with him. Right? Let me give you a recap, a quick recap of Joseph's life throughout these next five or six chapters uh, nearing the end of Genesis. Such a beautiful story of reconciliation and redemption. Right? He could have, if anyone had the choice, he could have chosen to give up on God. He could have chosen to see every single down circumstance that he was in and said, you know what? Fine. I give up. Forget it. I'm not going to do this anymore. But he didn't. He chose to add God to his perspective. perspective. And I want you to do the same thing today, right? This story begins by his brothers begin hating him. And, and so because of that, they eventually throw him into a pit. They initially wanted to murder him. But one of the brothers talks everybody out of it and says, let's just throw him in a pit and we'll go back and get him late. I'll go back and get him later. Well, in the meantime, some traders passed by, pulled him out of the pit and sold him into slavery. So it gets worse, right? His family hates him. They throw him into pit into a pit, leave him for dead. Then he's sold into slavery. And then we see a little uptick because he gains the favor of his master that he's sold to, which is actually a, an officer in Pharaoh's court named Potiphar. Right? And so then another downturn in his story, right? Potiphar's wife is with Joseph one day alone, and she has been trying and trying and trying day after day, after, after day, to try to get Joseph to sleep with her. And Joseph will not do it. He just will not do it. He's a man of integrity. And he says, why would I sin against God? And what that tells us in this scenario right there is that he knows God is with him. He knows God has put him in a particular place. He knows God has a prepared ending, a prepared uh, road for him to go down. And so she accuses him of adultery, which is not true. He's thrown into prison and he stays there for a while, quite a while. Such, such a time, in fact, that he spends years in prison. And during that time, he gains the, the prison warden's favor. And he begins to run the whole prison because the warden trusts him. This is a man who has added God to his perspective. He has added the story that God is building with him in his life to his perspective on all of these things that he sees, all these outlooks, all these opportunities to be fed up and frustrated and give up and quit. But he adds God to his perspective. And so then he begins to, uh, he interprets the dreams of a royal baker and a royal butler from Pharaoh's court. And, and exactly what he says would happen to each man happens. And he says, please, please, I'll, I'll, I'll interpret your, your dreams. I'll help you with these dreams. But remember me when you get out of here. Remember me. Please just remember me. And what happens? They forget. And he spends two more years in prison. Then one day, 
uh, the, the royal member of Pharaoh's court that was in prison with Joseph remembers one day after Pharaoh says, you know, I've had a dream, a couple of dreams, and I need an interp- interpretation. I don't know what's going on. And this man, he, he speaks up and he says, you know what? There was a Hebrew in jail with me many, many years ago when I made a mistake and he interpreted my dream. And so they call for Joseph and bring him out of prison and say, and the Bible says they, he shaves and he's brought before Pharaoh's court. And he interprets these amazingly powerful dreams for Pharaoh and says, listen, God is speaking to you. He's preparing. There's going to be seven years of plentiful harvest. And then there are going to be seven years of the worst famine that Egypt has ever seen. And Pharaoh says, because you've told me this, I'm going to put you in charge of everything that I can see. You're going to be the number two man inside Egypt, a Hebrew, a foreigner, a child of God, a man who had God added to his perspective, right? He gains favor from Pharaoh. And then what happens in Joseph's rise to power and him overseeing all of Egypt is this famine occurs. But thankfully, they've put aside grain and they're able to sell it and provide it to people. Well, in the midst of this famine, Joseph's brothers back in Uh, in Israel hear that the Egyptians have food to purchase. So they go to buy food from Egypt and unknowingly present themselves before Joseph to buy food for their families. And today I want you to remember one thing. Whether it is an alpha or an omega moment in your life, you must add God to your perspective. You must add God to your perspective and you must add a godly perspective to that thought. Today I want to take the next couple of moments and and basically just brag on my dad. A lot of people know my dad Tom and uh, my dad was trained up in in Houston, Texas and San Antonio, Texas as a freight company manager and a dispatcher and a driver and and a and a manager of people in this business that we call um, small package pickup and delivery. And um, and so, you know, as a young man, I grew up out in San Angelo, out in West Texas, and Dad had moved out there with uh, with our family um, just as I was really, really small, me and my sister. And um, he had moved out there to become an oil field headhunter because the oil boom was happening in the early, early 80s, and he he was fulfilling spots and placing people in jobs. And when that, uh, when that dried up, when that, when that uh, part of the business world, that boom slowed down, my dad took another job. And, um, and he was a, a manager of, of a um, repair station, a fuel station in our small West Texas town. And, and I remember one day that I was really small and I remember one day something changed. And, and my dad launched out on this idea to start his own company like he'd been trained in uh, San Antonio and Houston, a small package pickup and delivery company in our small West Texas town. And, and I just remember uh, a lot of the ups and downs that dad went through, not only with people, but, uh, but with equipment and finances and, and office space. And, and scheduling and all those things, you know, as a business owner, if you're watching me today, you probably know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of things that have to fall into line to make a business successful. And I remember um, Executive Courier launched um, when I was a very young boy. There were times when I would even drive to and from Dallas to pick up freight from the airport with my dad just as a young boy. And I would enjoy those times and I love those times. And, and I remember that no matter how bad things got for my dad, he never gave up. No matter how uh, tight it was with the payroll, no matter how many trucks broke down, you know, no matter how many people called in sick to work, he never gave up. He had this in him. He knew this idea had been put in him for a reason to start this business, to provide for our family, and he stuck with it. He had this perspective. And I want to read something to you today as we begin 
uh, rounding third base coming into home. And I want to read this out of Genesis chapter 45 because this is a story about sticking it out. This is a story about adding God to your perspective. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 45 in Genesis, Then Joseph could not restrain himself, right? His brothers were before him trying to purchase food for their families, trying to do the right thing, trying to be honorable, trying to be truthful. And he had hidden himself until now. And it says, Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? He wanted news about his father. Is my father still alive back in our homeland? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were just made in his presence. They felt bad. They were scared. They remember what they had done to him years ago. Left him in a pit for dead and lied about him. They were dismayed in his presence. At that moment, he could have scolded them. He could have made them pay. He could have sent them away into slavery. He could have sent them home with no food, no money. And what did he do? He had God in his perspective this whole time. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. And in verse 5 it says, But now... Do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Don't regret what you did in the past. For God sent me before you to preserve life. And I'm not going to cry right now, I promise. I'm going to hold it together. For these two years the famine has been in the land and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you and the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. He was saying right at that moment, he chose to have God in his story. He chose to have God in his perspective. He chose to see God moving him along that line in his story. Moment after moment was a choice for him. Anytime he could have given up, anytime he could have thrown in the towel, Any time he could have said, forget it, this is too much, but he didn't. He had God in this perspective. And you know what? God sent him, it says, to preserve a posterity for you in the earth. And you know what he did? He sent his brothers back to their homeland to find their dad, gather all their families, all their children and their children's children, move everything back to Egypt and said, you're going to live with me. I've become number two in this land, and you're going to live with me. Now, if that is not forgiveness and reconciliation and redemption, I don't know what is, my friend. That is a beautiful, beautiful story of God's grace. That's a beautiful picture of how God is with us in our lives. right? Pharaoh even reiterated those things. Pharaoh said to Joseph, you go back and find your family. Have them bring your dad. Have them bring their children, their children's children back. And and Pharaoh says they will live off the fat of the land of Egypt. That is an amazing promise because that's what family does. And let me read this as we close. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son that He might be the firstborn among many brethren, and that is you and me. Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren, ushering us into this family of God. What a beautiful story. It says, Moreover, whom He predestined, those He also called. Whom He called, these He also justified. And whom He justified, these He also glorified. Here's how you can know that God is with you. This story over and over and over says God was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. God was with him. God was with him over and over. And this is how you can know that God is with you. Romans chapter 11, verse 16 through 18. Paul's actually speaking about the fact that the children of Israel, 
had uh, chosen not to see Jesus as their Savior. And he says, you know what? That's okay because that brought us in, that brought the Gentiles in, that brought those outside of the children of Israel into this, into this family. It says, for if the first fruit is holy, then the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive tree, tree were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Do not boast against the branches, but if you do not, but if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. Isn't that a beautiful picture of God? He said, I am an inclusive God. I am your father. I want you in this family with me. Jesus has opened the door for you to walk right through and into God's family. If you're already a part of the family, it's beautiful. You can just let your father brag on you today. Here's what the Bible says about God as your father. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it's a familiar verse, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I love verse 17. Uh, a much less referenced verse. It says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him the world might be saved. That was His intention. Reconciliation, forgiveness, restoration. That is your Father in heaven. His plan was for you to be a part of the family all along. And I'm here to remind you today, that He loves you. I want to close on this scripture today. It's a very short and simple scripture in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. It says, We love Him. We love God because He first loved us. A lot of religion makes it out to be how much you do for God and how much you love God and how much you perform and how much you do when in actuality, this New Testament message is all about what Jesus did. And God provided a sacrifice. God gave His Son so that you would come into this family and that we love Him as a response to Him first showing us that love. Friend, I want, you, I want to remind you today to keep God in your perspective. Keep God in your alpha moments Keep God in your omega moments. Whatever you're going through in life, please remember that God loves you and that He's for you. If you're experiencing something that's contrary to the Word of God today, you have to know that you were dearly cherished by your Father in heaven and that He wants the best for you. I hope that helps you today. I want to pray for you as we close. I really appreciate you joining us for church at home this week, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Father, I thank you for my friends that are watching today. Lord, I thank you for, that your favor is upon them. The book of Psalms says it surrounds them as with a shield, and I thank you, God, that you have perf you have, the only performance that matters is that of Jesus. The only performance that matters is Jesus willingly giving of himself so that we could become family of God, that we would be uh, many brethren that the Bible talks about. God, I thank you right now that those that are watching can experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. Those that are watching can understand the depths of your love for them, that they do have a future and a hope that tomorrow will be better than today, and that you do declare the end from the beginning. Thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Wow, what an inspiring message from Pastor Derek. I hope that encourages you this week. I want to remind you that we have a prayer team that's here that's wanting to pray with you and partner with you wherever you're at. You can drop a comment below and we'll have someone connect with you. I want to take a moment to encourage you in your finances today. God goes above and beyond anything that we can think or imagine, and He has you covered, especially in your finances. You will not go with lack. 
If you are partnering with us in giving from our McKinney campus, you can select the QR above. And if you're partnering with us from our Dallas campus, you can select the QR below. Now let's take a moment to pray. Jesus, we thank you that we get to partner with you in our finances, and we know that you have us covered in anything and everything that we do. And so we praise your name, and we thank you for the miracles that are to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for Church at Home today. I hope you leave feeling refreshed and encouraged as you walk into your week. We are praying for you all week long and praying that you have an abundant week as you step into the new year.